the hardware design for GPUs is optimized for highly parallel processing. As a result, application programs for GPUs rely on programming models like NVIDIA CUDA, which can differ substantially from traditional serial programming models based on CPUs. Hence, in this video, we will check out the generic architecture of NVIDIA GPU. So starting with this diagram, we will show the high-level differences between the CPU and GPU architecture. In this diagram, green corresponds to the computation units. Gold is for the instruction processing, purple is for the L1 cache, blue is for the higher-level cache, and orange is for the memory. The transistor counts associated with various components are represented abstractly by the relative sizes of the different shaded areas. Based on the number and the size of green boxes in the diagram, we can see that GPUs have a large number of cores compared to CPUs, but each CPU core is more powerful and has sophisticated instruction processing and faster clock speed than the GPU's core. Hence, CPUs can handle more complex workflows than GPUs, but GPUs can efficiently handle workloads that can be parallelized significantly compared to CPUs. Similarly, we can observe from the diagram that CPUs have more cache memory than GPUs. Now let us dive deep into the CUDA-inspired GPU architecture. Here, as shown in the diagram, each GPU has a bunch of streaming multiprocessors, where within each of them, we have GPU cores, also known as CUDA cores, which are responsible for performing actual computation. Each streaming multiprocessor has 64,000 registers, each of size 4 kilobytes for faster data access by CUDA cores. Now, each CUDA core is assigned a thread, which is nothing but a stream of instructions and data. These CUDA cores within the streaming multiprocessors work in a team of 32 to execute single instruction and multiple data or in SIMD fashion. This group of 32 CUDA cores or threads that execute the same stream of instructions together on different data are called the warp threads in CUDA terminology. The reason for bundling threads into warps of 32 is simply that in NVIDIA's hardware, CUDA cores are divided into fixed groups of 32. Now, streaming multiprocessors can execute a thread block of a kernel. Multiple streaming multiprocessors may work together on a kernel. Now, if you do not know what a kernel and thread block are, check out the video in the description below. But to summarize, a kernel is a function that runs on the GPU, and a kernel may be subdivided into thread blocks. So each streaming multiprocessor is capable of executing a thread block of a kernel, and multiple streaming multiprocessors may work together to execute a single kernel. Note here that streaming multiprocessors act as a hardware home of the CUDA cores that execute the threads, and each streaming multiprocessor executes a single thread block, which may not be split between different streaming multiprocessors. Also note that if there are more blocks than available streaming multiprocessors, then more than one block may be assigned to the same streaming multiprocessor. Now, let us take an example to check out our understanding so far. Let us assume that we launch a kernel function as follows. Then, in this kernel launch, we have four thread blocks and 96 threads within each thread block. Considering that we have three streaming multiprocessors in our GPU, the first three thread blocks will be assigned to streaming multiprocessors 1, 2, and 3 respectively, and fourth thread blocks might be assigned to any of the three streaming multiprocessors. Here, it's assigned to the first streaming multiprocessors. Now, for each thread block assigned to the streaming multiprocessor, we have 96 thread. Each streaming multiprocessor then divides the 96 threads in its current block into warps of 32 threads for parallel internal execution and assigning warps of threads to run on available sets of 32 CUDA cores. Now, each streaming multiprocessor includes several levels of memory that can be accessed only by the CUDA cores of that streaming multiprocessor, like registers, L1 cache, and shared memory. Other memories, like L2 cache and global memory, are shared across all the streaming multiprocessors. We will talk about these memories in detail in the following video, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.